I may call on John Lazaro from Spark. Thank you so much. Magandang umaga. Uh, good morning to all of our colleagues and to our media present. It's been made clear by our previous speakers on this panel that one big thing that is at stake here is, of course, the question of national sovereignty, as well as the question of the scale of the transfer of fuel from the Red Hill facility in uh, Hawaii over to Subic here in the Philippines. Now, what I want to underscore with the transfer of 39 million gallons of military fuel owned and to be used by the US Navy is not just the question of sovereignty, and of course not just the question of the direct environmental and social impacts that this fuel has, but the broader context within which this fuel transfer is taking place. Take note that this 39 million gallons of fuel, because it is owned by the US Navy, is not some sort of export of fuel to the Philippines that at the very least could be used by Filipino civilians. This is not the case. The case is that this fuel is going to be transferred to Subic still as the property of the US Navy. The broader context here is the militarization of the Southeast Asian Sea, what the mainstream media and most commentators would call the South China Sea or the West Philippine Sea, but we would rather prefer to use the term Southeast Asian Sea. No? Uh, that the broader context is that there is militarization happening in the Southeast Asian Sea. What does this militarization look like? On the part of the United States and its allies and key partners here in Asia, militarization looks like this. It's the expansion of military basing rights through EDGA. It's the expansion and the intensification of military exercises. More warships, more troops, more weapons, more ammunition, more training, all of it to prepare for some future war that these governments claim that they do not want to fight but are preparing to fight right here, right now. Every single day, there is a new exercise here in the Philippines getting ready for some sort of war. And another aspect of that is, of course, when it comes to the question of intensified basing, of intensified military exercises, you have intensified logistical needs. Part of that is the energy to fuel war. And that fuel is very much well enough. Uh, 40, 39 million gallons of US Navy fuel to be based in the Philippines without any discussion from the public without any discussion from the media here in the Philippines, without any notice from the government of the Philippines or even of the United States to the Philippines, tells us that there is something behind all of this. Now, of course, we can't, some people might say, of course, that you know we can't just jump to conclusions. Maybe this is some sort of agreement you know, fine print of agreements between the Philippines and the United States and it's all part of the treaty so we don't, have, we don't have to tell you anything, right? But 39 million gallons of fuel. Is 39 million gallons of naval fuel that is enough only to service the needs of a fleet for its operations for quite some time? This is not something that we could say is just a fuel transfer. This is for us a fuel transfer that is curiously enough to fuel a fleet. And so we want explanations immediately from the government of the Philippines and from the government of the United States. What is this 39 million gallons of naval fuel for? Because if we are left in the dark, we are only left to make, and frankly, we are only left to make the logical conclusion that this 39, gallon, 39 million gallons 
of naval fuel is going to be used to intensify militarization, militarization in the Southeast Asian Sea. Now, let me make it clear. Militarization is, of course, not only coming from the side of the United States and its allies. It's also, of course, coming from China. We know this from the fact that there are intensified, that there is intensified construction of military facilities in the Southeast Asian Sea. There is intensified presence of the Chinese Coast Guard and the Chinese Coast Guard militia. We know this for a fact. But that is precisely the point. The more militarization we see in the Southeast Asian Sea, the more tensions will rise. The more we will see the chance of conflict escalating in our own backyard. And who is going to be at the front lines of this conflict? None other than the Republic of the Philippines. And who is going to face the brunt of the costs of this war? Not just financial, but also physical, environmental, social, generational. It is going to be the citizens of the Republic of the Philippines. The people of this country will bear the brunt and the costs of war. Now, I want to push back a bit uh, against the prevailing narrative in mainstream media, both in the United States and here in the Philippines as well. The, pervasing, the pervasive narrative is that we need the United States and we need the help of its allies to help us counter the aggression of China. For the longest time, that has been the stance of the Department of Foreign Affairs and the stance of multiple administrations in this country and something that has been widely backed by the public here in the Philippines. That is understandable due to our history of colonization by the United States. However, I would also like to point out that the United States is not sending its ships here for so-called freedom of navigation exercises solely to defend its little brother Philippines from Chinese aggression. The broader, still, the big picture context here is that there is rising tensions and conflict between the United States and China that is not simply great power rivalry. It doesn't emerge simply because China is an emerging power and the United States doesn't like that. Let's call a spade a spade. This is imperialist rivalry. It is rivalry between two imperialist powers that are going head to head because they are fighting for economic influence around the world and they are looking to compete with each other because they want to, because they want to ensure access to markets, access to resources, access to diplomatic connections all around the world. And if it means war, then it means war. We have seen imperialist rivalry and the cost of imperialist war all throughout history. Time and time again, we have seen this kind of conflict happen because these imperialist powers were left to their own devices to wage war around the world whether it be at the cost of the destruction of countries like the Philippines, of former colonies, of countries that they seek to dominate and in reality do dominate. So we want to make the point that all of this historical and present environmental and social destruction that is happening right now and is about to worsen when this 39 million gallons of naval fuel arrives here in the Philippines and is stored here to fuel perhaps the needs of naval vessels coming from the US and its allies. We can expect the same thing that the Filipino people have suffered in the past when it came to prominent US bases in the past. Environmental, social destruction, the exploitation of labor, gendered and sexual exploitation, the destruction of our environment, the same reasons, so egregious and condemnable, that the people of this country decided to rise up and say, we do not want these bases anymore, we will expel these bases. In 1992, if these bases, if these facilities, if these troops are allowed to return here, in any capacity and in any scale, 
expect to see these problems return, expect to see these problems worsen. This is a problem especially for us as youth. Because these effects are not simply something that happens in one day. We sleep today, wake up the next day, and then suddenly everything has changed. No. These problems are a slow burn. The climate crisis is a slow burn. It's accelerating. Day by day, we know that the climate crisis is getting worse. But it's something that's a slow burn. You don't see the changes happen instantly. At the same time, we don't see the effects of militarization just the day after. It takes months, it takes years, it takes decades, and then suddenly we find ourselves in a situation where we're suddenly in an open conflict. And we are going to be at the forefront of that conflict. So right now, what seems to be such an early stage, we want to call it out and say this is not actually an early stage. The U.S. is already preparing for war. Already, the allies of the U.S. here in the Asia-Pacific are forming alliances precisely to prepare for this war that they claim they do not want, but is already something that they are preparing for. These alliances are the AUKUS and the Quad, AUKUS being Australia, UK, and the U.S., and the Quadrilateral Security Dialogue being the U.S., Japan, Australia, and India. These are all groupings, alliances, networks, countries that all want to intensify basing and training here in the Philippines. And it will be completely no surprise to us if these 39 million gallons of fuel here in the Philippines, if successfully they come here to the Philippines, will be used to service this kind of intensified training and intensified basing. So of course, we reject all of these basing. And we want to make it clear that we have four demands coming from us, from Samahan ng Progresibong Kabataan, or SPARC. Number one, we want an immediate explanation from the governments of the Philippines and the United States on this fuel transfer from the Red Hill facility in Hawaii over here to Subic in the Philippines. Number two, we want the Philippine government to immediately reject fuel transfer from Hawaii to Subic. Immediately. Third, we demand the rejection of all treaties that are causing militarization here in the Southeast Asian Sea and in the Philippines. What are these treaties? Number one, the oldest and the strongest, the Mutual Defense Treaty between the Philippines and the United States. Number two, we want the Visiting Forces Agreement junk, not just with the U.S., but also with its allies. Number three, we want EDCA junk. No more military basing, no more base leasing. We want all of these things to be gone. Not just because of the environmental and social impacts that they have, but precisely because of militarization. And number four, finally, we want the Philippine government to pivot away from always relying on the frankly infantile notion that we have to pick between the United States and China. We do not want what the Marcos government says, that we have to rely on the U.S. government. And we do not want what the Duterte faction says, that we have to rely on China. We reject having to choose between this binary of superpowers. We propose an alternative. The countries of ASEAN are the ones who are most affected by militarization, by environmental destruction, by social destruction, and by the threat and the reality of imperialism. Our proposal is that the Philippine government should focus on building strong ties with the ASEAN with the aim of forcing the demilitarization of the Southeast Asian Sea and forcing China to negotiate with the countries of ASEAN precisely to achieve the, the demilitarization of the Southeast Asian Sea, both for China and the United States. Thank you. Uh, we are opening now the, uh, the floor for questions. Again, you can access yung um, statement ng Hawaii Peace and Justice uh, through their website, Women's Voices, Women Speaks. Uh, the link is in the uh, document na sa footnote po. In case lang, and also, uh, it is also distributed here on site. Uh, Hello, 
Hello, hello po. Good morning. Uh, ang katanungan ko po is, ano, uh, meron na po ba tayong hakbang para mahadlangan ang paglilipat ng fuel dito sa Subic Bay? Thank you po. Uh, sa ngayon, sir, si sinong gusto nang sumagod? Okay. Uh, sir, at this point, dahil hindi po po na nako-confirm, kaya nga po tayo nagtatanong. Kaya nga, ang isa din sa gusto natin dito, we are demanding accountability, transparency, and ano, uh, responsibility. Anong mangyayari pag nakarating na? Nakarating na ba? Kasi ang according sa news, sir, is three weeks. Lagpas na po ng three weeks mula ng December 20 na naglayag yung barko. So, are we to say na nandito na siya sa Philippine Area of Responsibility? Nasaan na siya dito? Uh, ba't hindi natin naririnig? Kaya nga po, tayo nagtatanong. Sapagkat alam naman po natin, noong na-transfer sa atin uh, at umalis na yung base, lalo na sa Subic at sa Clark, hindi naman lahat ng areas yan ay open to the public pa rin. Uh, nananatili naman po yon. Kaya nga po, naging mabilis lang ang pagbalik nila nung bumalik na sila yung mga tropang Uh, militar yung kanilang access sapagkat kanila pa rin naman yon alam nila yung mga gamit doon alam nila yung mga taguan doon alam nila kung saan nila ilalagay yon problema hindi po natin alam at yun ang magiging uh, sa katunayan po yun ang magiging problema natin dahil tayo ay nasa ring of fire tayo ay palaging uh, nililindol maaring bahain di ba tsunami imagine niyo po nakabaon siya sa lupa what if maglik what if magcombust Ano mangyayari paano? Sino ang mananagot? Yun po yung problema natin eh. Kaya kaya po kung kaya kung naabutan yung sinasabi ng mga kasama natin sa white, kung kaya sila mismo military families na nagkakanda sakit na ay sinasabi to their faces that the water is safe kahit amoy gasolina na. Paano pa po tayo? Eh tayo napakalayo natin eh. Di ba po? Hindi nga tayo familiar eh. Meron po ba tayong standard? sa sasabing water quality, pag buba may burak-burak, hindi na po ba yun safe? Eh alam naman po natin kung ngayon nga, parang pinagtsatsagaan pa natin yung medyo hindi sa kagandahan ng itsura ng katubigan natin, ba diba? Kapag nag-leak yan, malalaman po ba natin yung difference? Ang follow-up lang po, ma'am. Ma uh, meron na ba tayong idea kung saan nagagaling yung, kung meron bas-bas galing dito sa atin? nakuha lang natin itong information na ito mula sa ating mga kaibigan sa mga social movements peace movements sa ano sa Hawaii wala po tayong lumabas ito sa isang pahayagan Honolulu reporter star okay a star advertiser lumabas po ito sa media sa Honolulu At this is not a recent issue. This is a problem that the population of Hawaii, of Honolulu, have been protesting against for years. It took them years of protesting until very recently, in 2021, there was again a spill and contamination of the water, which they had been Uh, protesting against as a real possibility. So this is the only time that the U.S. Uh, Navy acted to say, okay, we will close down the storage facility in, in Hawaii, the Red Hill storage facility, and at, they adopted what they called a distributive strategy to distribute all the fuel, over a million, a hundred million gallons underneath that Red Hill storage facility, which they are now closing, finally, uh, decommissioning, and they will redistribute the fuel to different countries. And one of the countries identified, supposedly, is the Philippines. That's why Uh, this is something that we should really be very worried about, very concerned about, very disturbed about, and 
We should know what is happening, and more than that, there should be some public issue or debate. This cannot just be an action on the part of the U.S. We don't even know if the Philippine government was really consulted. But certainly, this is beyond what, is, what we, the Filipino people, have been made aware of. It's bad enough that we have been coerced or pressured into adding additional EDCA sites just recently, just about a year ago, to the five original sites uh, provided to the U.S. military forces. Bumalik na po sila. Bakit hindi tayo nagtatanong noon pa? In the first place, bakit natin pinayagang bumalik sila ng wala man lamang protesta galing sa taong bayan na, na pinatalsik na po natin ang base militar at maliwanag nilagay na yan sa ating constitution bakit po nilalabag uli natin walang walang pakundangan ang constitutional provision na wala nang magkakaroon ng panibagong mga foreign troops and facilities in this country without a treaty concurred in by the Senate. We have entered, as, as uh, has been mentioned earlier, we are part of the ASEAN agreement of neutrality and the nuclear weapons free zone in this area. We have always touted and shouted that we have an independent foreign policy but please let us ask questions. Is this the way an independent government with a foreign, independent foreign policy, is this how they should conduct themselves? Hindi po. We are asking questions and that's why it comes as a shock and a feeling of protest and condemnation. Why is this happening again and again without people's consent and discussion? It's time to ask questions and to criticize and to protest at makialam. We have a stake here. It's not only the Philippine government, but every person, every woman, man and child we, this is affecting the life and health situation of our people. We cannot just let this go on without media. We look to media to please ventilate the issue and ask questions for us so that we, you can reach out to greater our population. Kailangan po natin pukawin ang ang kaalaman ng ating mga kababayan. We should add our citizens' voices against all these impending and ongoing wars of aggression on the part of the U.S. Right now, alam ko ang matinding-matinding issue is the Palestine issue. But who is behind the Palestine-Israel genocidal policy and attacks against Gaza, against the Palestinian people. Isipin po natin yan, kaninong kamay ang nagpapakalaw sa lahat ng ganitong mga warlike situations. Magtanong po tayo at kasama po sana kayong mga nasa media para po mapukaw ang damdamin, ang kaalaman, ang kaisipan ng ating mga kababayan. Hello. Yes, may questions pa po? Apo. Uh, wait. <laughs> okay. Uh, magandang uh, umaga po sa inyong apat. Uh, Kaki Cruz po mula sa uh, tuklasin natin ang ating katipunan and of course uh, DZXL uh, ang ating katipunan DZXL uh, every Sunday 7 to 9 tuklasin natin sa katipunan channel. Okay, uh, um, ang dami ko pong ano pero isa lang po ang nararamdaman ko ngayon. 
sa mga impormasyon na ibinahagi nyo. One is, kinabahan ako, naalarma ako, at um, nangangamba ako sa posibleng uh, gulo na mangyayari sa susunod ng mga pagkakataon. Okay? So, first po, uh, para lang uh, maliwanag lang po yung mga uh, tanong sa isip ko. First, uh, nung nalam, kailan nyo po nalaman mismo na may ganitong aktibidad sa subig? That's one. Second, nung nalaman nyo po ito, uh, is there any chance na una, tumawag po kayo o sumulat kayo sa Department of Environment and Natural Resources o sumulat din kayo sa Armed Forces of the Philippines to ask, may mga, may nabalitaan kami na ganito, is it true? So, yung po yung mga questions sa sarili ko na parang bilang isang organisasyon, parang memorial obligation ka rin. Tama po kayo, mabuti nga po inilabas nyo yan because ang impormasyon bang ito ay classified information kaya hindi nila pinapaalam sa taong bayan. So, um, that's ano, ano, one set of question. Tapos, kay sa mga abogado po natin, ano ko lang po, pagkaklaro lang, pag sinabi po bang treaty, uh, di po ba dapat ito ay dumadaan sa referendum? Uh, ito po ba ay parang desisyon na lang ba ito ng uh, Kongreso at Senado? So, yun po yung mga tanong ko. And ad added to that, may mga notes lang po ako. Um, Ah, uh, okay. Uh, okay, nung pong, yung pong ano, pagkaklaro ko lang po, kasi sabi nyo po, uh, tinanggal na natin eh, wala na yung base militar. So, ang tanong ko po, sino ang nagpabalik? Bakit bumalik? At sino ang pumayag? Ngayon, kung ang gobyerno natin, ang mga opisyal ng gobyerno natin, ang nagpapayag niyan, Aba, eh yaan po ay eh, labag sa batas ng, sa saligang batas ng ating Pilipinas at yan po ay pagtatraidor sa taong bayan. Di po ba? So, please answer po. Uh, maraming salamat, Kathy, no? uh, from the uh, DZXL. No? Uh, Tama ka, no? Nakaka... Kakapangamba, nakaka-alarma, nakakatakot, at sa totoo, nakakagalit. Nakakagalit na ganito yung nangyayari. Remember, mula doon sa may fax na binitawan ng ating mga kasama from Hawaii, um, 19,000 gallons yung nag-leak sa kanila. Affecting 93,000 families. 19,000 gallons nag-leak mula sa 80-year-old facility. Pagkatapos, walang ano-ano, maglilipat na lang sa Pilipinas ng 39 million gallons. Ha? Ang layo ng 39 million sa 19,000. Kaya, napakarami yung posibleng maapektuhan na mamamayan at napakalawak na karagatan yung posibleng, di ba, makontaminate nito. Yun nga lang pagbiyahe niya eh. Magmula sa Hawaii, papuntang sa Pilipinas, three weeks. Paano kung may nangyari? Huwag niyong kakalimutan yung Tobata Harif, di ba? Yung damage doon. Huwag niyo rin kakalimutan kapag iniis, nag-iisip tayo ngayon nito. Yung basis clean up na iwanan nila hanggang ngayon, hindi pa rin. Di ba? Tapos ang paglilinis. Ang dami pang iniwan nila. Pagkatapos, eto na naman. Huwag natin din kalimutan na sa matagal na panahon, paano pumapel ang subig? Matagal na yan. Hindi na yan ba, uh, base, no? Hindi na yan. Uh, uh, naging commercial siya. Pagkatapos, bigya, bigla na lang. 
mag i store ka dyan ng fuel ng 39 million, saan mo i-store yung ganong kadami? At kailan hinanda yung facility na yan? Kailan ginawa yung underground facility na yan na pwedeng paglagyan ng 39 million gallons of fuel? Diba? Yung ganitong kadami ay sapat talaga para manggyera. Kaya talaga nakakatakot. Hmm. Uh, alam ba ng ating gobyerno? Napaka-inutil naman ng gobyerno pag hindi niya alam. Pero kung alam naman ng ating gobyerno, napaka-walang kwenta naman ng ating gobyerno para nalang pumayag sa ganito. Uh, hindi, hindi na ba tayo matuto? Pero ano ang pinapakita nito? Yung agad-agad, bigla-bigla, yung pwede na lang mag-store ng ganun kadaming Navy fuel. ba? Diba? Fuel para pang militarize. Fuel para pang gyera. ba? Diba? Ano ang pinapakita nito? Diba? Na, kaya, pwede tayong basta-basta na lang pang himasukan. ba? Diba? We cannot, we should not allow this interference. This intervention because this affects our territorial integrity, our national identity, our sovereignty. Kaya hindi to so pin lang na fuel lang. 'Di ba? Eh kung basura nga 'yan eh, 'di ba? Ang laking usapin na pero ito. 'Di ba? Ni hindi nga natin alam kung use na 'yan, yung fuel na 'yan o ano nang klase ng fuel na 'yan. 'Di ba? Kaya nakakatakot talaga. Kaya, kailan namin nalaman? Baka one week, one week pa lang eh. No? Mula nung malaman. Kami nga mismo, we do not even have enough time. Kaya kaagad-agad kailangan namin ipatawag yung Stop the War Coalition. Agad-agad kailangan pag-usapan ka agad. ba diba? Mabuti. Handa agad ang ating mga kabataan. Handa agad ang Stop the War para, sige, pag-usapan ito sa harap ng media. Sige, expose ito. Kasama natin magtanong sa gobyerno. Kasama natin ang media ng na mangulit sa gobyerno, di ba? Maningil sa gobyerno na ito. Ano na ang ginagawa niyo? Di ba? Pikit mata ba? O talagang binali wala kayo ng US? Pinapakita nito, di ba? Na ganun ba kasubservient ang ating bansa? O ga dahil ganun na lang kung baliwalaan ng US? Di ba? Ano 'yon? Uh, we were made for the longest time. We were made to believe that we need US. We were made to believe that we are weak. We were made to believe na kailangan natin sila. Because that's how. ba? Diba? That's winning the hearts and the minds. Ganon kasama yun sa buong uh, taktika, iskema ng US. Kailangan na natin yung baguhin. Mahirap, ba? Diba? Matagal, malalim. Pero kailangan nating simulan. Kailangan nating simulang manindigan para sa ating bansa, para sa ating mamamayan, para sa ating sariling teritoryo. At, at simulan natin ngayon, di ba, i-expose ito. Kung kami, naniningil kami, kasama. Dapat lahat ng media maningil. Lahat ng itong katanungan namin, sagutin. Ni hindi, eh, paano, mas ginusto talaga namin. Sulatan ng AFP, sulatan ba si BBM? Mas ginusto namin na kausapin ang mamamayang Pilipino. Mas ginusto namin na kausapin ang media at i-expose ang lahat ng ito. Dahil hindi lang talaga nakaka, nakakapangamba. Nakakagali talaga. This is so enraging and therefore we are, we, all of us should be enraged by this Uh, attack to our sovereignty by this interference, by this intervention, by this attack to our territorial integrity. Yung pagtrato sa atin na parang basura o basurahan o lagakan ng kung ano pa man gusto nila. Tama na. ba? Diba? Ta tama na yan. Manindigan tayo para sa ating bansa. Remember, U.S. will never be acting in the interest of the Philippines in the interest of the Filipino people. Tayo lang yon. U.S. will only act in and for the interest of U.S. and never for the Philippines. Magandang umaga po din.